Hey folks, this is Matt Chat, and this is my plywood canoe building adventure. It was supposed to be a cheap two-week project, but instead it took a couple of months. I ended up building two canoes, built a canoe carrying dolly, a boat rack for my truck, and a hanging system for canoe storage. I made tons of mistakes and probably would have given up if it weren't for the money I had already spent. It became an amazing adventure, all for a canoe I wasn't sure I was going to use. Well, I uh, finished putting on the uh, epoxy uh, fillets uh, on the inside and the outside. Uh, it's all done. I'm just letting it dry now until tomorrow, and then we can begin on the sanding. In the meantime, I think I'm going to work on the paddles and uh, start uh, refinishing those. Good morning. Well, the glue up is done. Everything is dry, looks solid, and I like the shape. Um, in fact, I found that the curve of the, uh, uh, not the keel, but the bottom of the boat in the middle is actually rounded. It looks very good. And not rounded like a ball. It has just a very light curve, which is what you want. Just the lightest of curve. What is happening is that, is that I reinforce the ends. Here, let me show you. You should be able to see it from here. Uh, there's a, uh, you can see the curve in the center. It, it gently curves away from the center, but at the end, it curves back up. And that was the curve I was seeing at the end of the canoe. And that is caused by my uh, strengthening the ends underneath uh, of the bottom. Uh, both of them have an extra sheet of plywood glued on and uh, that stiffener is preventing it from bending at the same way as the rest. Um, not much I could do about that. Perhaps some sanding will help. I could do a little bit of sanding on that, but not too much. I don't want to really take away the surface. Uh, but generally speaking, this is a pretty good curve. Let me move the camera here and I'll show you it from, uh, from the front end and you can see the, uh, the outline of the canoe. It's just excellent. That is a nice curve. Beautiful shape to the canoe. You can see the curve of the middle there. It's exactly right. So that means I got the width of the stick just about right. And the sides do flare out in the center. Not excessively so, but they do flare out. There's no question about that. I think I got it. Again, I got the shape correctly. So, job done on that. By the by, I just want to mention something about the duct tape. Uh, taking the duct tape off has proved to be quite an adventure. It's not that hard to take off, but uh, some of it has left some glue behind. And um, that's becoming a bit of a problem uh, because uh, it doesn't seem to be removed very well. Now, I've used two types of duct tapes. Uh, I, I have the regular gray duct tape and I only use a few pieces of this. And uh, I bought this uh, orange duct tape because one of the videos about canoe uh, making this way suggested using the orange duct tape because it had a stronger adhesive. Now, uh, he must have been talking about a special uh, duct tape, but anyways, this one does have a stronger adhesive than this. Much stronger. None of this has stayed on. This comes off just like that. So perhaps this is a cheap version of duct tape. Anyways. All I can tell you is chunks of duct tape, glue clots, uh, have stayed on the boat. And removing that is becoming a problem. Now let's not forget, I don't want to stain this boat. So I can't use a remover that's going to uh, stain the boat and leave a permanent discoloration in, in an area. For example, I can't use water because water does discolor this stuff. Um, I can't use oils. Uh, so. I'm limited to products that evaporate completely. Um, so I have tried acetone because it was suggested as a dissolver of duct tape uh, glue. 
This is not tight. <laughs> anyway, um, so acetone didn't work. I tried some denatured alcohol. That didn't work either, and both surprised me because both were suggested as a product to use to dissolve the glue of duct tape. So perhaps this orange duct tape has a special formulation that does not dissolve in there. Now I'm down to one choice, uh, well, one class of choices, gasoline or a NAFTA, white gas. Uh, white gas is probably uh, cleaner and evaporates more completely and will most likely not leave a stain. Now I'm just too worried, but I don't have any white gas. <laughs> I do have some gasoline though. Uh, now gasoline might leave a stain. Um, so I'm going to uh, test it on a piece of plywood that's not on the boat and uh, see what that gives me. And perhaps if that works we can use it to dissolve some of the some of the glue uh, because I've used it on the gum for example on the seat in the in the truck uh, and it worked perfectly well it wasn't quick but it did dissolve the gum and remove it completely uh, and it didn't stain the truck seat uh, so and they do use it for uh, things not white gas is used for cleaning leather and deep cleaning so uh, I think that maybe I'm down the right path here hopefully because I've exhausted my options if the gas doesn't work I'll have to go out and buy some white gas so, um, anyways, let's uh, let's try the uh, the gasoline on a piece of plywood and see what that gives us. All right, I've got some gas here. Um, I've got a large container full of gas. I didn't use it very much in the winter. It's for the uh, snow blower. Um, so we don't need a lot of gas. Just get a little bit on this paper towel. There we go. It's already soaked in. Already, I'm hopeful. Okay, so. Let's uh, take a look at this here. What do you think? I don't think that's staining it. It doesn't even look discolored. And if I give it time, it'll evaporate. So, on that basis, it works. Let's try something else. Let's get uh, some uh, duct tape here. Just uh, put some. Uh, oh, I'm encouraged by that. Oh yeah. There we go. We're seeing the thread be below. <laughs> this works. Okay. So we've got a product that will remove that glue. Uh, success. And I don't go out and buy some white gas. Even better. Uh, I've got an infinite supply of paper towels and an infinite supply of gas, so we should be able to get this taken care of fairly quick. Alright, so you can see here the glue stuck on the uh, boat there. And I've got the uh, glue, and I'm just going to... Uh, it do, it's not fast, but it's not slow either. <coughs> and you can see, most of the glue is already gone. There you go. We just got this little bit left here. Inevitably, when I set the uh, gas down here, there was a pile of wood here, and uh, the uh, gas uh, container wasn't straight; it was on an angle. You might have seen that in the previous video. Anyways, and I told myself internally I should straighten that out; it'll fall. Well, I didn't. So I just put it back, didn't pay attention to how I put it back, it slipped right off, and we had a spill. But it's well ventilated, it's not a big spill, and it's evaporating fairly fast, so it'll be gone in about half an hour. But anyways, lesson to the wise. Well, that's it 
for the cleaning off of the glue, let me tell you, that was quite a job. It uh, took me about an hour and a half, uh, but uh, I got it all done, and I'm glad to have done it this way. Uh, that I know now that when I use my sander, I'm not going to get any glue residue on the sander and spread it all over the boat. That was my biggest worry. Uh, and then you try to get that off, it would just be insane. It just make all your gluing or your painting uh, of uh, epoxy um, problematic. Uh, so anyways, now on we go to sanding. Getting ready for the fiberglass tape, I've uh, held it here with some clamps and I'm just laying it out on the, on the cut uh, as you can see here. I just go along like that and uh, once I get to the end over there I'll give it a cut and then I'll have an exact length. And once I've got a length I think maybe I'll uh, just make uh, four more or three more and that'll be the pieces I need for the, for the outside. So this is my first time uh, doing the fiber, well not exactly my first time, but almost my first time, so I'm a bit hesitant as to how to proceed. I'm going to do my best here. I'm just going to do a quick lay down of a coat of fiberglass on the corners. So next it's uh, laying down the fiberglass tape to the epoxy. First I'm just going to put it on roughly. Okay, so now I'm just going to... It's not going to work. Well, good morning. Uh, day after all the fiberglassing. I didn't videotape it. I completely forgot. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the uh, results are all right on the surface. Um, it looks, you know, shiny and everything and the fiberglass is in the right area. But my nitpicky eye uh, was not satisfied with the uh, process and the result is good, uh, but uh, not great. Uh, for example, over here, you can't see it with the camera, but there are quite a series of drips. Um, just my uh, inexperience uh, with fiberglass, I show a few steps there as if I know what I'm talking about, and I don't. Uh, this was my first real time uh, doing a large project with fiberglass. And I have to say that um, fiberglass tape uh, has idiosyncrasies. Uh, for one, whenever I applied the brush uh, strokes, it would pull the tape. Literally from the whole boat, I would be at the back over there and it would pull the tape. And I, part of that was because I was using the same brush for the whole process. And the epoxy from the first batch, because it took several batches to do that, started hardening the brush and it got stiffer and stiffer as I went on. And that would have been a good idea to change the brush. But I didn't do that. Anyways, uh, a roller might have been better. Uh, because I over applied. Uh, I put on so much, I didn't intend really to paint the boat. I just put on so much epoxy that it dripped. And that's the thing, the, the epoxy when you mix it the first time it's almost like water. It's very liquidy. So it's, it, it, it runs uh, incredibly easier. Easier than paint. Um, but within the time of your applying it, it stiffens up it becomes like a syrup almost not not to the consistency of a thick syrup but a thin syrup a cheap syrup um, but it, it it makes it harder to apply and the coats inevitably become thicker uh, so speed is of the essence unfortunately this type of process isn't one for speed uh, it's, it's one for attention uh, the tape would bubble up 
uh, air would, bubbles would get into it and I'd have to go back and push it out. The drips, I kept going around and picking it up. I think that the result on the other side, which is where I started, uh, it ends up looking pretty good. But here there's some good drips that I didn't catch. I just didn't catch them. So, because a drip means sanding. To get the surface smooth again, that means you're starting the whole process over again. Um, so I don't really want to sand if I don't have to, but I'm going to have to, I guess. And I ran out of the fiberglass resin as well, uh, completely. I, I've got none left. So I won't be able to do any more until I go back out and purchase some more in Kingston in another town. Spend another, I'm not buying another gallon, but maybe another half gallon or something. Uh, but I'm definitely going to need a couple of container or uh, more to finish this. Because I decided to do the outside first, get it all done and then I'll work on the inside. Anyways, on we go. That's gonna be it for this part of my canoe building adventures. I wanna thank you for joining in and I wanna remind you not to forget to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, we'll find a lot of progress in the next episode. Uh, see you soon. <laughs>